Um, some of you might not be familiar, like who is this crazy wench with the phone, the microphone? I'm Tempest. Tempest the wench. Tempest the wench. <laughs> it's usually the witch and other assorted uh, accoutrements. Um, I am the person behind gothicbellydance.com. And um, I have the, the title that was given to me as the goth mother. So um, you can say I, I, I'm responsible for this. <laughs> it's your fault. On some days it's very good. I'm like, yay! And some of us, oh my God. But mostly happy. In a gothy, happy sort of way. Who are you? Hello, I'm Anar, and I must warn you all, when I have a mic, things get weird. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashara, and um, what else do you want me to say? Why are you here, Ashara? Why am I here? Tempest dragged me here. <laughs> um, yeah! um, why am I here? I didn't realize this was going to be an existential philosophical discussion. Why are we here? It's all absurd. Well, there's an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. I'm going to go back to my room and read The Stranger. <laughs> Yay for The Stranger. <laughs> okay, so did any of you have any questions or did you just want me to ramble? Actually, I remember there was one on Facebook that someone posted asked, how do we pick our music? Mm, that's a good one. Yes. That's a very good one. Um, for me personally, sometimes I just hear a piece of music and I can see the whole piece come around it and go, that's, that's it, I can see the story. And it speaks to me because to me, dance is about making the music visually manifest. A lot of times I get a crazy idea like, I want to do the Horror of Babylon. What kind of music can I find? So I'll go searching for just the right thing that I'll know it comes together. So sometimes it's a chicken, and sometimes it's the egg. And sometimes there's bacon. Where? Bacon! 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 bacon. 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 Yeah, um, finding music can be a, a real horror show. Hello. There you go. Things get weird. I'm a Leo, so if I have a mic, I, I might start, you know. So is music. <laughs> Do we? You're um, outnumbered by Leos here. <laughs> so, yeah, finding music can be a real horror show. Uh, if you find a piece of music that inspires you, that moves your heart, then I would say really work with it. Um, I'm very much like Tempest. Sometimes the music, I'll hear some music, and then that's it. You know, the whole thing, costuming and everything comes together. But other times I... I have an idea, a concept in mind, and I have to hunt. And that's when it gets to be a struggle. Um, but what I really want to say is that no matter what style of dance you do, no matter what your concept is or where you're um, dancing, the music is first. If you don't have the music, you don't have an act. And you have to respect the music. That's the bottom line. That's, that's my addition to this whole. I can't help but be a total smartass, but um, music music matters unless you're dancing to John Cage's four minutes and 33 seconds, and then it's the ambiance. No, I'm gonna stop being a smartass. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> for me, music has to have an emotional connection, and I have to have some sort of emotional perspective with it, um, whether or not it's it's modern American or European music or um, Middle Eastern music. So there has to be an emotional perspective. And most of the time for me, the music comes first. So I'll find the music and then everything else kind of comes into place. And sometimes I find a song and I know I want to dance to it, but it sort of has to percolate for a while. It sort of simmers. And then sometimes it t turns into something and sometimes it doesn't. And then um, sometimes like last night when I did my, my Geiger alien I had the music and I knew I wanted to do something to it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I was talking to a friend over dinner about the Belly Horror Show, which is a big thing we do in Washington, D.C. And I didn't know what, what I was going to do for the Belly Horror. And I was kind of freaking out. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then we were talking about aliens and you know, monsters and stuff. And then I figured, like, like an epiphany 
came into my head and was like, oh, yes, Geiger, Alien, this song. And sometimes it's just, you got to just kind of let go and let your instincts just kind of work. And then listening, you got to just like listen to music. Just listen to, if you go to a restaurant, you go to a club, if you hear something you like, go ask the restaurant owner, go ask the DJ. Um, I like specific record labels um, that I just keep looking at what they're releasing because I knew that I like their aesthetic. And then um, people give me stuff. So um, yeah, big, big labels, I mean, I'm gonna totally toot the horn of Octofoil Records, um, where Maduro publishes his work. Um, but also, I really like Ant Zen, Ad Noisium, Hyman Records, uh, N5MD, um, Timpanic. Lots of obscure, like, European, German-run electronica labels are sort of where I hang out right now. and. Um, Going to festivals and stuff, you hear stuff, but I, I personally don't want to dance to something I've already seen someone dance to unless it's classic Middle Eastern belly dance music. Like, everyone dances to Aziza, everyone dances to Um Kalsum, and that's, to me, that's like learning your compulsory ice dances. And ice dancing, I was an ice dancer, and I'm blabbing away, and I should probably give the microphone to someone else, but the Leo doesn't want to. All right. All right. And uh, just a, a little roundup on that is that, you know, with Gothic belly dance, when you are going to venture out onto that plane, is that it's important to realize that when you're doing fusion, not only is your foundation important in how you're moving, but all of the pieces need to come together cohesively. So your music needs to work with your movement, which needs to work with your costuming and your entire presentation. So you can't just go, I had this really cute costume and I just want to, oh, I'll just pick any random song that sounds dark and gothy and put some extra eyeliner on. Somewhere back there was going, oh no. It's okay, we forgive you. You're a Persephone. And those of you who took the workshop, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Ooh, Persephone, Underworld, Underworld, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but yes, seriously, it, it's very important. <laughs> it's very important to bring all the elements together and realize they are all important. Too many belly dancers, to like, oh, I'll just, you know. Oh, oh, Anora's hopping. What? So, I. What I want to say is I think it's important to understand the Gothic culture if you're going to do Gothic belly dance. It's not just um, corsets. There's a whole scene. There's literature. There's movies. There's uh, literature, movies, <laughs> you know? It, and it's not late 20th century, you know, stuff. This stuff goes back centuries. You can, you know... I mean, you have to know that we're not like, you know, roving tribal Huns type people, you know. Uh, we're not? No. But I think that holds true for any kind of, you know, subgenre of the dance. You have to know the culture. And there's, believe me, if you're in the audience and you're not part of the goth culture and you're coming out here just in a costume, it shows because you don't understand the music. You don't understand the culture, and it will show through. So take some time, you know, to check it out because it's beautiful. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Which begs the question: Do you have to? Yes, fabulous. Do you have to be goth to do gothic belly dance? Ooh. I'll let you go first, and then I'll add. Okay. Hi. You're like, oh, damn, a shower girl's talking again. Um, I, I personally, I'd like to address this because I don't consider myself like labeled as a goth. I, I get labeled as goth, which I think is very, very interesting. And I think it's because I help run this event and I do a lot of dark inspired pieces, but I wouldn't necessarily call them gothic with a capital G. And um, so for me, like I grew up going to clubs and um, you know that attracted people who identify as goth but I never self-identified as goth. It just happened that I liked really, really dark things. So I tried, I think I tried to fit into the, the DC 
like Washington DC Gothic subculture and I just was like, I'm not really like these people either, but I understand sort of the, the appreciation and delight in dark things that comes with the Gothic subculture. I've always been really attracted to sort of the darker side of the human experience. And if that's what makes someone goth, then okay, you can label me as a goth. And I think that is a really big element of it, but um, I have times where I just want to wear my jeans and, you know, a tank top and, you know, no one would ever know. And I dye my hair black, so maybe I am a goth. I don't know. Goth. Goth. Rug. <laughs> um, but for me, like, it's not like I define myself as a goth, but I like hanging out with goth people. Ashara is goth because she doesn't label herself as goth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to realize that, you know, we have the stereotypical goth and the things that, um, the books that Voltaire puts out and makes fun of because he, he's just a smart ass in that sort of way and fantastic, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's the, if you are attracted to these things, it, just because you don't have a huge backlog of um, black nail polish. Uh, <laughs> Sure, and eyeliner, and you know, you don't have the prerequisite. It's not about labels. Goth didn't come out to be about, you know, looking all the same and shopping at Hot Topic. It, it, Hot Topic's okay if you, you know, the 50% off rack's not so bad. If, if you live in Missouri. If you live in Missouri, there isn't much. <laughs> yes, but it's not just about that. But is if you take, and Kajira's coming to join us on stage. Yay! But you, you don't have to, you know, fit the stereotype in order to. I've had people, you're not goth. Okay, sure, if you don't think so. Whatever makes you happy. Because I don't really care either. <laughs> I'm me. I can only be me. So, hi. 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 But what's most important is that uh, you can say with belly dance, because there are people who say, well, you have to be Middle Eastern to be belly dancer. And I come from a very diverse, crazy cultural background. Basically, a lot of people who like to sleep with other people from different cultures. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, back there, there's a, there's a Jew, there's some Rom, there's Italian, and Sicily was overrun by everybody. It's like, yeah, yeah, technically I, I could be, but who cares? It's because I appreciate the culture. I love Middle Eastern music. I love the folkloric dances. I appreciate and understand the culture. And the same thing is true since goth is a culture, it's a subculture, and if you take the time to read the literature and look at the art and listen to the music, then that is being appreciative of it. So even if you don't wear the uniform, you can still perform it if you honor it. Okay? Let's, let's introduce Kajira. Hi everybody, Thank everybody, <laughs> all 20 of you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Oh, uh, they're very enthusiastic, they say. That's good. So that's, that's super good. My, I'm Kajira. Hi. What am I supposed to say? I'm glad I made it. I was sorry I was late. <laughs> Kajira, why do, you, why do you do? Why does Kajira do goth? What, what interests you about goth? Oh, man. It balances my bright, light side, and I need my darkness. And I love to express it just to be balanced. And I'm so joyous in my tribal style that I do. And... And sometimes I feel like I'm just woo <laughs> way too over there. So, um, although I'm pretty perky with my goth too, but it does help me to think about and embrace the darkness, the yin and yang of myself. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? You can raise your hand. You, with the fantastic hair, do you have a question? 